You're listening to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, which can be found on our website at treyerwilderness.com and also on iTunes. Welcome to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, where we are homesteading traditionally 100% off-grid today and offering preparedness and survival tips for tomorrow. Here's your host, Tammy Treyer. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining me today on Mountain Woman Radio. It is somewhat sunny out here. We have hit our gray season, so we get the the dreaded gray days and rainy days. I'm a sunshine girl, but a lot of wonderful things going on. I mentioned last week that we have our gift guide available. You can find that at treyerwilderness.com slash gift guide, and in there you will find um, all kinds of wonderful discounts, wonderful products, As I mentioned in the gift guide, it's very important to us to have quality products and to have products made in the United States and um, to have really good customer service coming from these companies as well. And everybody that is featured in the gift guide are really amazing people and companies. That is a blessing that we've had is to not only um, have a business relationship with a lot of these people, but also formed a friendship. So I really do encourage you to check it out. You will find amazing um, courses and products and books and all kinds of things. So definitely check it out. I know there will be something in there for each of you, and um, I hope you enjoy uh, perusing it. Uh, last week we spoke with Jessica Espinoza from Delicious, Delicious Obsessions. Dot com and 20 dishescom and she talked about her um, meal uh, preparing classes and today is a kind of uh, complimentary interview um, with a good friend of mine and he will share with you how to garden and uh, provide for your family all the whole foods you need to do your meal planning. So without further ado, today we will be speaking with Rick Stone and he is from rstonyacres.com. He is a master gardener and has so many awesome things to share with you. So without further ado, Rick, how are you doing today? Good, Tammy. How are you? I am really good, and I'm so glad you were able to join me. I would love for you to take the time and share a little bit about yourself, your story, uh, the details of your website. Um, So I'm going to open the floor to you so you can share that information. Okay, I can do that. Well, uh, my name's Rick Stone, and I am a fanatic gardener. I love to garden. Uh, I love to produce our own food. My wife and I, when we first got married, we lived in a little trailer house, didn't have a lot of space, and as soon as we got a real place, we started gardening. And, and over the years, that has just turned into you know, a real obsession to us now, to where now, even though we live in a you know, pretty severe winter area, we still garden year-round. So we have, you know, a garden that grows 365 days of the year. And, you know, it's just something that that we have loved to do to provide food for our family. We, every year we grow somewhere between, you know, 1,000 to 1,500 pounds just in our little, and and we're city dwellers. Uh, We have a, a... uh, urban homestead, I guess you would call it, and and uh, you know, so so we have just a small amount of land and and borrow some space from another guy because we like to garden so much and <laughs> do what what we can do to provide just as much produce to our family as possible, and you know that kind of complements the other things that we hunt uh, and the fishing and stuff that we do as well, but it gives us a, a good base of food and and you know someday we hope we can provide all our own food. We'll need more land than what we have now, but uh, you know that's that's kind of where we are. So, and I'm also a master gardener. I graduated from the Utah State University Master Gardener Program uh, here about five years ago, and that's kind of a service organization. And that's what got me started in the the video courses and the blogging and all the other things that I do. I actually started my blog, which is Our Stony Acres, 
and I started that as a part of the service project for the Master Gardener program. We had to provide 40 hours of service in the year after we graduated, and part of what I did there was was set that blog up and. And, you know, for the first year, I provided a lot of free information and, and, you know, growing guides and how to grow vegetables and things to do. And that was part of of why I got started. And it's kind of blossomed from there. And and now I teach online video courses and and get a chance every once in a while to lecture at a big home show or a garden show or things like that. And it's it's been a lot of fun and kind of a fun adventure for us. So I grew up on a farm. And uh, then moved to the city, and now I'm a city boy and have an office job and, and do this on the side. And I think the gardening is kind of getting back to my roots and mm-hmm. and uh, back to the you know what I what I did when I was a kid growing up in in southern Idaho uh, on the farm. So yes. kind of my story, my adventure. I don't know what else you want me to to cover oh, there, that's, but that's uh, awesome. And and it's just funny how life how we travel through life. I'm very curious about some of the things you mentioned. Um, that was awesome. I appreciate you sharing that. I am actually, I've got questions. Um, so you're living in the city and you are raising uh, or growing over a thousand pounds of produce in the city, correct? Correct, yeah. And it gets a little bigger every year. We're hoping <laughs> pretty soon to make that a solid 2,000. So. <laughs> well, I imagine, I, I mean, you're saying it's addicting. I totally get that. It's, it's just so awesome to watch things, you know, you plant them and then you watch for the little green to pop up. I mean, it's, it's exciting to have a garden. It's really exciting. And I totally understand the addiction because we are totally there. But I am, I am fascinated because so many people, so many of our audience um, and friends, you know, live in places where they don't feel they can have a garden. But in my opinion, you can pretty much have a garden anywhere. You just need to take the time and maybe do things um, a little creatively. So those of you that are out there listening, Rick is your man because I know what he's going to share today um, will definitely uh, help you and hopefully inspire you to give it a try. But he also has tools that you can use, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, I loved how you said also that you expanded um, and and I believe you said garden from your uh, you know neighbor's property and different things. You lease property to garden. Yep, yep. So so we have a garden here at our own house, and usually we get about, you know, between seven or, you know, 800 pounds here, and then we have this borrowed space that we, we borrow from a friend of ours. Uh, he, he has about two acres that he, he used to actually grow for the farmer's markets, and he's gotten a little too old to handle it all, and so he's kind of divvied it out and lets people borrow space, and we, we grow a lot of potatoes and corn, big bulk crops there, nice. and we usually get, you know, five, six, seven hundred more pounds from from that space as well. So. Oh, that's just awesome. That's so awesome. So there are opportunities, folks, for community areas, um, depending where you're located, and that's just something that you need to check in with your county and see if there's community gardening available. And if not, you know, check with your farmers, even your neighbors with big lands, or like, like with Rick, the, you know, the neighbor was gardening but has gotten too old to continue it on his own. So, you know, there's, there's always options. And um, the other thing... I would imagine you would consider this too, Rick, excuse me, <clears throat> is to uh, barter with people, you know, to utilize their land in exchange for some of your of the produce as well. Exactly. I there's Here in Salt Lake City, there's a, a community-supported agriculture, a CSA, that actually, they don't have a farm. They just grow everything in the backyard of people's property. That's awesome. You know, all over the city, they have this little, yep. you know, farm that's combined about three or four acres where they do a CSA, yeah. you know, from the backyard. So there's a lot of creative fun things that you can do with oh, gardening. That's awesome. That's awesome. The other thing you need to keep in mind is a small space. So if you've got a small yard, mm-hmm. you'd be amazed at how much produce you can get from just, you know, 100 square feet or 150 square feet. Yeah. I mean, four or five tomato plants is going to give you close to 100 pounds in a year. And, you know, I mean, you can, you can really... You know, with just a few grow boxes or just a, a small patch of land, you can make a, you know, a big dent in your food budget and the quality of food that you eat uh, by, you know, having just a, even a small garden. Yeah, yeah. And every little bit helps. And, and to start, even if you had a, a tomato plant in a pot on your patio, is an awesome start, an awesome way to get started. Um, there's nothing better than fresh tomatoes. Oh, I love fresh tomatoes. <laughs> and if you can grow a tomato in a pot on your patio, you'll be able to grow 
anywhere because <laughs> I can grow anywhere, but I can't grow in a in a pot in my patio. So. <laughs> But I know a lot of people that live in apartments and, you know, they have just a little deck with, with uh, you know, some tomato plants or cucumbers or a zucchini plant, you know, okay. growing on their deck. So, you know, there's there's a lot of ways to do that. Yeah. Now, something else that fascinated me was that you grow year-round. Um, I would love for you to expand on that and how you um, are able to pull that off. You don't have a greenhouse, correct? We do not have a greenhouse, no. We we do that mm-hmm. using mini hoop houses and cold frames, and mostly cold frames in, in our area. Okay. Uh, and that that's kind of my current gardening obsession that's been <laughs> going on for about seven years now. Uh, we, we started kind of learning how to extend our, our growing season a little bit, you know, get, get things going a little earlier in the spring and a little later in the fall. And then I, I came across a book um, by Elliot Coleman, called The Four Season Gardener, and, and in, in that he kind of teaches people how to, to do this year-round gardening, and I, I, it just caught on fire for, for both my wife and I, and, and we love the idea of being able to have fresh produce from our garden year-round, and part of what inspired us is we, we went to Southern California to the amusement parks down there in January, and they were growing lettuce and broccoli in the flower beds <laughs> we're like that would be so cool if we could do that but it's too cold and that's when I kind of started doing the research and so we use you know it's kind of a, a combination of knowing when to plant things and what to plant and then protecting it with either a, a mini hoop house or a cold frame and we're by the you know the combination of those things we're able to have a harvest something to harvest all year long from our garden so we're we're moving into the, you know, our fall garden's about done. We've got a little broccoli left to harvest and some turnips and a few things like that. And then we'll start moving now into our winter garden, which consists mostly of greens. It'll it'll be lettuce and mosh and spinach and and Swiss chard. And there's a bunch of other more exotic things that you can grow, arugula, or, uh, arugula sorry, arugula. <laughs> or, uh, you know, a lot of, there's actually about 30 things that you can grow. And then another thing that we like to grow in the wintertime is carrots as well. Oh, nice. And if, if you get, get the timing right, because they're not really going to grow in the wintertime, there's not enough sun. Okay. You know, once, once we hit that 10-hour mark, there's just not enough sun for things to grow. So you have to have it ready before we hit that 10 10 hours of daylight mark okay. and and then it'll just kind of sit there in cold storage in your cold frames in your hoop house all winter long and you have stuff to harvest all you know oh, fresh and awesome. it's it's a lot of fun you know we'll we'll have we have a kind of a dry spell in January there's not a lot other than carrots for us to harvest in January but all the way through December we have lettuce and then starting back again in February we've got lettuce and spinach and swiss chard and you know just all kinds of stuff and and so you know every day of the year we could go out and harvest something if we wanted from our garden. So it's, it's pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. Fun. That's really awesome. We have a greenhouse started, which will hopefully get finished this winter, um, depending how things go. But we do have our garden, and we have raised beds. And this year, we have a very short growing season also. And last year, we were too busy to get a chance to do this. But this year, we put hoops up over top of three of them. And mm-hmm. that prolonged our season nicely and now I just need to get out and um, plant some of my lettuces out there and I have a tiered planter that I keep in the house also that I grow herbs and teas and and lettuces in during the winter but how nice to be able to have that outside and I'm so anxious to be able to utilize my hoops this year but that's it's just so awesome to have something out there to be able to provide for the family like that that's just awesome. Yeah, and the, the stuff you grow in the wintertime is light, fair. You know, okay. it's it's going to be lettuces and, you know, greens, kale, kale yeah. all of that kind of stuff. About really carrots are about the only real solid, substantial thing that you can get. Uh, you can get, you know, a few turnips and yeah. and radishes and things like that as well, but, but really carrots would be the bulky crop, yeah. I guess. But, you know, the rest of the stuff is going to be lettuces, and you know, but it's a good change anyways. Yeah. You know, it's good to have that kind of stuff because I'm, we're we're actually kind of tired of tomatoes. Right. We pulled out our tomatoes about a week and a half ago. And we're sick of them. So. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. That's where we. That's where the canning and the jarring and that and the preserving comes into play after a while when you get that many. But it's so awesome to pull them off the shelf then too. So that's yeah, just yeah, great. exactly. 
Great. Yeah, and having the fresh vegetables to go along and kind of enhance, you know, yeah. what we have. And we've gotten it to a point now to where, you know, I've I've got two or three hundred pounds of, of potatoes in a, a little mini root cellar and, and then with the fresh lettuce and carrots and everything that we have, we, we have a you know, a pretty good solid amount of food. And we have a you know, a decent sized family, so I can't provide you know, everything that we eat, but but we have a pretty good supplement, of, you know, of, of what we Phenomenal. can eat from, from the garden, so it's yeah. pretty cool. Awesome. So you can make nice stews during the winter with your venison and have a nice salad to go along with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. There you go. Well, we're going to take a, a quick break here to get some words in from our sponsors, and we'll be right back to talk with Rick uh, a little bit more about what he has to offer and what uh, some of the things are that he has available to you. So stay tuned. The new Pioneer Magazine, taking the skills and techniques of yesteryears and combining it with solar, hydroponics, and various other advancements of today, creating the most robust pioneering magazine on the market. In addition to the new Pioneer magazine, they also have available the American Frontiersman magazine, taking you back to a more primitive time, and both magazines can be found at newpioneermag.com. Get your copies today and be prepared for tomorrow. Do you have a loved one, or are you suffering from celiac disease or a gluten intolerance? Trying to find that perfect flour? Whether you are baking cookies, flaky pie crust, or baking breads from scratch, or you are looking for a quick cake from a package, Look no further. Better Batter offers non-GMO gluten-free products with an assortment of packaged items as well as flour packaged in varying sizes, including their bulk sizes, perfect for those of you that are practicing your preparedness skills. Better Batter is not just another gluten-free flour. It's what you have been searching for. Visit betterbatter.org. Do you have your free digital subscription to Prepare Magazine yet? If not, then hurry over to preparemag.com and start getting each monthly issue sent directly to your inbox. It's easy. All you have to do is go to preparemag.com, enter your name and email address, and you're subscribed. Consider signing up for the premium membership for past issues and exclusive resources. You can even subscribe to the beautiful print version of Prepare Magazine. Visit preparemag.com and choose the option that's most valuable to you. Prepare Magazine, encouraging, empowering, and enriching your journey. Okay, we are back, and again, we are speaking with Rick Stone from OurStonyAcres.com, and that's O-U-R-S-T-O-N-E-Y, Acres, A-C-R-E-S.com. And Rick was sharing with us about um, his passion for gardening, and he has some really amazing classes going on, and uh, I would love for him to share that with you guys. So, uh, Rick, if you would like to take over and just talk about the classes that you have available, that would be fantastic. Sure, sure. About a year ago, I, I fumbled across this website called Udemy. It's U-D-E-M-Y, Udemy.com, and it's an online education uh, website. And I, I looked at their site, and they had uh, this, you know, this home improvement and gardening section, and it was glaringly missing courses on gardening. So I thought, well, what a cool opportunity. And I'd like to hear myself talk anyways. And so I thought, well, I'll, I'll take the opportunity to, to film some videos. And so I started filming some video courses that are published there. And they're, you know, some, some good fun courses. The first one that I did was actually a seed starting course. And it teaches the basics of, of seed starting, how to, to get your own seedlings going. And as, as gardeners kind of progress, that's one of the things that you kind of naturally move into. And I wish that I had learned. And it took me 10 years of trial and error to really get to where I am now on, on seed starting. And so I wish that I had had a little bit of a guide. And so I, I took the time to film that video. And it's about three hours long. And I go through and talk about all of the different aspects of, of year-round gardening. Or I'm sorry, of seed starting. And the nice thing about Udemy is is you're able to take that course in little pieces, mm-hmm. so you don't have to sit for three hours. You can you can take it at your own pace, and and the, it's broken into different lectures and different sections. And so it's a fun format. It was fun for me to film and and to to do these videos. And like I say, that's the seed starting one was the first one I did, and that kind of got me excited about it and had some success and. And so I, I set off, and I now have, I actually have four videos. I just published a new one in October, and I have four videos on there right now that cover all kinds of different aspects of, of gardening. So we've got the seed starting course. I had a lot of people 
And about a year ago, we had a really popular blog post on on our blog on the PVC drip irrigation system that we use. And the, the post just went crazy, uh, the biggest post we've ever had. And I had so many questions, people asking me how to make it work, that I, I went ahead and I filmed a, a video on how to actually set up a PVC drip irrigation system for your garden. And this one's about an hour and a half long and just goes through and, and talks about the details. And I, I kind of made it a simple course. Some of you will laugh at some of the things, you know, I, I show you how to drill the holes in the pipe and things like that. But some people need that other people don't but it's a it's a fun course and it goes through just the basics and talks about why it's a good system why you should be using drip irrigation in your garden and and a, a good little course and, and that one's my shortest course by far and then my biggest course and it's kind of my flagship course is my year-round gardening course and you know as you know that's my obsession and <laughs> and so I went ahead and filmed a, a, a course on that year-round gardening that one right now is about four and a half hours long and I'm actually in the process of adding about another 45 minutes worth of content to that course right now. And so that one ends up, it, it'll be about five hours long and, and just goes through all the different aspects of how to have a year-round garden. It talks about cold frames. It talks about hoop houses. It talks about all of the different things that you need to do to get that going. And, and, and talks about the timing and, and how to, you know, get your garden going. And so this course, the other thing about this course would be that, even if you don't want to grow in the winter time like I do, the principles that you'll learn in this course will help you to extend your garden season on either end of the spectrum. So uh, I'll teach you a lot to actually add a month to six weeks to your spring garden, and I'll teach you how to s stretch out your fall garden, you know, uh, maybe even two whole months. And so you could easily, by, by learning these principles, you could easily add three months to your gardening season and a whole bunch of produce. So it's a really great, great way to, uh, to do things, and it's a good way to learn. It's, a, it's less dry than a book. I think that's how I learned it originally, and, yeah. and now I've got some experience, and so it's a fun way to do it. Uh, that's so and then I do have – I'm sorry, go ahead. That's so true. That's so true being able to learn that way because when certain subjects, when you read, it doesn't, it doesn't sink in as well as when you can, you know, do it – more interactively so that's really awesome yeah and, and I show you know a lot of examples from my garden and you know it's it's a it's a fun way to learn I think and I do have one other one for for those of you that are just looking to increase the you know kind of the basic solid foundation of your garden I have a, a vegetable gardening basics course as well that just I, I just actually released in October and uh, that course is about two and a half hours long and it'll kind of be a living course so as people ask me questions, I'm going to add more content. Uh, my intent is to maybe end up with this course being four or five hours long nice. and just a good solid, you know, basis. And right now it, it goes through and teaches you where you need to be planting your garden and when and, you know, what to plant, especially if you're a new gardener, what are some of the best things to get started with. And so that's a fun course too. And like I say, that one will be continually updated as, as people ask questions and, and uh, you know, it, I'll, I'll add more content to it. And we've had, that one's had just a fantastic reaction. I, I have like a hundred and, I'm sorry, about 250 students in that course already, you know, in just, awesome. just the, the month or three weeks that it's been out. So awesome. uh, it's been a fun course and a lot of interaction and questions and stuff. So good course. That's really cool. And what's really nice, guys, is that um, Rick's courses are really attainable financially. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the nice things about his courses too, like you were saying, is that you know you can listen and watch them. I have a really hard time getting time to read, but I love to learn. And I, I will never feel that there's not something that I know everything on. So honestly, I am considering taking all of Rick's courses just to glean information from them. And like I said, his prices are great. And one of the other nice bonuses for you guys especially, is that in our Treyer Wilderness 2015 gift guide, you can find his courses at a discounted rate. He was very generous to offer really awesome rates to our audience, and I encourage you to go check it out. You can visit treyerwilderness.com slash gift guide, and you will be able to find all of his courses in there. And I really encourage you to take them all. I think you will find that they are all um, something that you can budget and um, 
learning to be able to do your seeds, the whole nine yards is just so important. And to be able to embrace it and have the knowledge to do it successfully is always so important because a lot of times what happens is people start and it doesn't always go real well for them and then they don't continue. And this is something that can be a life changer for you and your family. So Rick's, I have already seen um, one of Rick's courses and I I highly encourage you to embrace them. They're really awesome. Thank you. Thanks. I appreciate that. And yeah, I've got a special price for the the gift guide and, and the holiday season. You could take all of my courses. I think if you bought them all, it'd only be about $40 yeah. for you know, 10, 10 plus hours of, of content. So yeah. cheaper than what you'd probably pay to go to your local extension agency and yeah. take classes there. So Absolutely. yeah, please take them. Absolutely. And another nice thing is you can do them over the winter months. The winter months are always slow for us. That's our finally our slow down time and time to learn new things and do different projects and stuff. So, and I often talk about, you know, those months being the time that you start preparing for your garden, because if you start preparing during the winter months, when spring comes, you're ready for it. And you want to have some of your seeds started, you know, right away as, um, as the new year comes on. So depending what you're planning. So, I highly encourage you to embrace these over the winter. And if you know somebody that is looking to do gardening, these are a great way to gift an item to somebody. This is a great, uh, you know, a great gift. So definitely consider exactly. That. And Udemy, Udemy does have a gift option, so you can go in and, and gift it, and it sends an email with a code cool. that they get the code, and it doesn't cost them anything, and you pay for it. And it's a, it's a fun option there too. So. Excellent, excellent. Because so many people, you know, like to pass things down like that, or if they're going to gift something, they like to gift something that someone's going to learn. So this is a great gift for a kid, a ch- children. Ch- you know, a child to get for, you know, if they like to plant things and, and that, a uh, great gift for the for a child to be able to learn and really embrace gardening at a young age, too. Cause I was blessed to have grandparents that taught me, but not everybody does. So just some thoughts for the holidays. <laughs> but, Rick, we are running out of time, and I'm really grateful that you could join me today. Uh, we've had a couple uh, struggles here with our interview. Uh, Rick is going through an ex- Dream windstorm, and we've got gray weather. And uh, being that we're 100% solar, not everything always cooperates on the internet. The house works fine, and the power is great, but the internet connection and the phone connection gets a little funny sometimes. So Rick has been a real trooper, and I really thank you for that, Rick. <laughs> sure, sure, I'm glad to be here. I would like to open the floor up to you one last time and give you the opportunity to say, um, you're, you know, give my audience one last. Um, wor- words of encouragement towards gardening. Okay. All right. You know, for us, gardening has just become part of who we are. It's providing, it's providing for ourselves. And, and yes, I, I live in the city, but I'm, I'm able to provide so much of my own food. And it, it just kind of lends itself to the, the lifestyle of, of me being able to provide for myself and for my family. And, uh, and so gardening is just a great way to do that. And then besides that, homegrown food tastes <laughs> a billion times better oh, yes. than what you're going to get in the grocery store. It's, it's just so much tastier. And we've, we've quit buying tomatoes in the grocery store and melons and yeah. all that kind of stuff because they just taste, after we've eaten our homegrown stuff, it, it, you know, they just taste awful. <laughs> so, uh, you know, gardening is, is a great way and, and it's, you know, Get started small. Don't go out and dig up your whole backyard like I've done. Uh, start small so that you don't get overwhelmed and, and, and you know, plan and, and grow and expand as, as you go. But uh, that's a great hobby and a great way to provide for your family and, and to get away from the conventionally grown produce and, and provide for yourself. So just an awesome, awesome way to do it. Awesome. Very good words of advice and so true. The Produce from the grocery store tastes nothing like homegrown. There's just no comparison. <laughs> and yep. and the other thing is too, being outside like that and working in your garden is just like so good for your body and it's good exercise, believe it or not. Um, but it's just really refreshing to be out there and it's it's been really awesome to be gardening with my son. We really enjoy that time together. Um, you know, that's priceless to me is to be able to have that mother son time and doing something constructive, but also just you know, bonding and, and, and handing down, uh, you know, a skill, a life skill. And 
it's just really awesome. And uh, Rick, I can't thank you enough for joining us today. And I really encourage you folks to check out Rick's website. He's got a lot of awesome material on there and his classes are really over the top. The pricing is great and and you will learn so much. So check him out for sure. And thank you for taking the time to join me today. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you feel my show is worthy, if you would uh, go ahead over to iTunes and give it a review that enables me to reach more people just like you. And I really want my reach to grow because I want to be able to share this knowledge with other people. So thank you guys so much again. You guys take care. And until our next show. God bless. You're listening to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, where you will learn something new every week. We hope you enjoyed the show and encourage you to join us at TreyerWilderness.com. And be sure to connect with us on iTunes. Remember, your reviews on iTunes are very important to us and help us reach more people just like you. 